First of all, how's everybody doing? Good. Good. I guess we need to do attendance first. Uh, <laughs> on the Mad Hatter, how y'all doing? We're going to start with Greg and do attendance first, like we in the classroom. <laughs> Thank you for having us on the podcast. I had, uh, my name is Greg Carter. I am the uh, writer, creator, and showrunner for the TV series, Before, which is on UMC.TV. Good afternoon. What's up, big bro? Is everybody in California, is everybody in different places? I just got to Houston yesterday. Okay, Miss Junie, where are you I'm at? In California. Okay, Carter, I... what's going on, Mr. Carter? What up, what up? <laughs> D-Rec, I know you, D-Rec, I know he's somewhere in H-Town. Yeah, yeah, I'm right here, man. What's up, Hatter? How you doing, Playboy? Mr. Carter, he on the freeway somewhere. He trying to do it all. Be a family <laughs> man. Be San Francisco man. behind me. We go, the bridge behind me. <laughs> doing it all, baby. So how's it going? Outer space. I'm about to go to outer space. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go, boom, let's go. Okay, okay I, I like that out of spell. Okay, baby, keeping it futuristic. I like that, I like that, I like that. Well, Mr. Carter, I'm gonna start with you. This is your baby. This is what you've been doing for the last two years on UMC. Of course, this is the second season of Fifth World. Now, you know we're hey. down here. So let's talk about it. Let's go to the beginning. Where this started, why it started, and where we are, and where we're going into the second season. Well, the show started out originally, um, uh, this would have been almost 20 years ago, I wrote a, um, wow, a yeah. film <laughs> and I was planning on having someone do it and, and I was looking around and I said, well, I guess I better do it since no one else will. <laughs> and that became my first film, uh, Fifth Ward. And um, the film got selected to play at South by Southwest. It got a lot of publicity, uh, eventually got, uh, on TV with BET and got on DVD. And around that same time, I was thinking about what I was going to do next. And I wrote out a treatment for a TV series. And this was almost 20 years ago. And then pretty much I got busy and it sat there <laughs> for the next 18 years. <laughs> and I was doing other film projects and everything else. And then uh, Angela Northington and uh, some people over at UMC gave me a call and said, hey, we know you just do some do a lot of things. What do you have? I said, well, I have this TV series I've been wanting to do. Uh, it's, it's a prequel to the movie, mm -hmm. and I would like to do it. And so they gave me the green light to start, and that put us in the position of doing uh, season one, uh, which was really successful. It debuted at number one on the network. And, uh, and then a little bit after that, we got renewed for season two. And, uh, and and the one thing about it, I, I knew I wanted to expand the scope of it all. So uh, it, it got really big and crazy, but uh, it, it's been a journey, but it was been fun finishing it. The, the cool thing that I always wanted to do was work with talented individuals from the, from the H-Town area, uh, but all over. And I, it, it's, there's so many people that bring a lot to make the show great. It's a multicultural, uh, multi-ethnic bonanza, and I'm very happy that I got the opportunity. Is it kind of weird? You that's the new hot thing to do now is multicultural, multi-ethnic things in the environment that we're in. But you have already been doing that. Yeah, I, I think the thing is, is that uh, Houston has always been a melting pot. Fifth Ward, even though they were predominantly black, they were always kind of multicultural. And I felt like I, I felt like the story for Fifth Ward uh, wasn't just mine to tell. So I really wanted to make sure we had that diversity. It, it's part of the reason why when you watch an episode, I have a little documentary uh, interview at the beginning, at the end of each episode, because I felt like it, just, it wasn't my story alone to tell. And I wanted to make sure other people had a voice uh, to tell their story whenever possible. All right, well, let's talk about the stars of the show. Oh, we have the fantastic Carter Redwood, who plays the role of Ray Ray, who is a young brother <laughs> in the growing up in Fifth Ward, who's made the biggest crime of all. He fell in love with the daughter of an Asian woman, who is played by Junie Hong. Junie was in the first uh, movie years and years ago. She played a daughter and now some 20 years later she's playing the mother the recast there my man Derek D. Reg Dixon who plays the role of Seth who is like the crime boss uh, of the whole neighborhood fifth ward and of course Mr. Sheldon Jolivet uh, who plays uh, the role of Reverend Benny Parker who basically is uh, 
he's a spiritual leader in the neighborhood, but he has a big problem with uh, one of the uh, guys in the uh, government, uh, Councilman Davis, who is the black councilman from the area. So they go head to head all the time, particularly because uh, uh, John Vett's character feels like uh, uh, Councilman Davis, which is played by uh, Carl Anthony Payne, killed his daughter. So he's got, he's trying to bring the man down any way possible. So we have a wonderful cast. I'm glad we were able to get pe some of the people on the phone. Uh, Carter not only acts, but he sings in the show. So we, so we had to have some people who were triple threats that can sing and <laughs> everything else. So he did a terrific job doing that. And of course, thank you, uh, uh, D. Rick. Uh, uh, he's always been the gangster, <laughs> so he played himself. So D. Rick just played him. So D. Rick just played himself. Okay, I mean, if you're gonna go get a gangster, you just hey. <laughs> so Mr. Rick, just play yourself. Now, Rick, I don't really like like he said he, in Greg's words, you're a gangster. <laughs> I don't. So tell me about you becoming, a, uh, being a part of this. How hard was it for uh, Mr. Carter to uh, get you to even act and play in, you know, this particular season of the show? Oh uh, man, it was cool. Um, you know, Greg dropped all of it on me at the last minute. Didn't tell me nothing. Kind of threw me in the water, <laughs> and 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 I just kind of that's how it happened. But he called me and asked me if I would do it, and. Greg always supported me in everything. So I, I was honored to do it. And once I got on set and I saw the seriousness of it, then I was like, hey, I got to try to up my game a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> this ain't no dirty third. This is some real <laughs> stuff. So, so he, he, he kind of threw By me in the And we got to mention, for those who don't know, Dirty Third is a movie that d Ray put out years ago himself. So he has, he has, his foot in the uh, film industry as well, but he did it from a uh, uh, business uh, producer, executive producer standpoint back in the day. This is him in front of the camera with a big role, I suppose. Do you get the chance to kill somebody uh, in said episode, or you can't tell me that about the season yet? <laughs> Greg told me don't say nothing, man. Okay, all right, somebody <laughs> gonna die. Somebody, somebody <laughs> got to die, I get it. I get it. <laughs> and then Miss Junie, uh, he brought you back, like he said before, so you come in, you know, in a different stage as an actor uh, and as a character in the show. How was that? Did it take Greg a lot to convince you to be a part of it? You know, you had moved on, you were doing your own thing. How was all that? And how did you enjoy, you know, being a part of the cast? It was very funny because we shot Fifth Ward, the movie, almost, what, 20, 25 years ago? And I was playing the daughter. So it was real easy for me to come back decades later and play the mother because then I got to see a lot of the actors that were in the original and they came back in the TV series. So it was almost like a high school reunion. Everybody came back a lot of there. I think we had some crew people that came back, didn't we? And then we had the original cast members, but they came back and they all played different characters, but you know that they were in the original Fifth Ward. So it was almost like a family reunion. It was it was very sweet. How was Greg as a director? Was he hard on you? Did he let you kind of like freestyle a little bit? How was that? Or did you have to stick to script? No, I, you know, I stuck to the script. And if I did the scene and I didn't get feedback, then I know it was good. Mm -hmm. But if he wasn't <laughs> happy, then he'd pull his side and say, no, this is not what I want. Say this differently. Do this differently. So if I didn't get feedback, I knew I was doing it right. Mm. So either way, I, I felt really good about the scenes, the performances. Mr. Carter, does, uh, and, I, and I'm not sure, does he get a chance to perform in the show as well? I know you said he's a triple threat and I know that he's a talented <laughs> brother, but does he get a chance to showcase the skills in the next in this season, uh, I, I mean, Greg, how, how much how much we we leak it? How much are we you, 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 I mean, you can't tell me, you can't tell me. <laughs> yeah, I'm just asking, you can, bro. You can do that. You can I do mean, that. I mean, I yeah. mean, there, there, there are definitely moments. There are definitely moments where where I get to showcase some stuff, um, and I think that that's just was a, a really big part of Ray Ray's journey. You know, obviously, like him being you know tapped into the music and his dream of of singing and getting a record deal. You know, we sort of follow uh, his journey um, with all of that while he's also you know, uh, head over heels in love. So that, that's sort of Ray Ray's journey is him following his dream, but also fighting to be with the person that he loves. So uh, we, we sort of chart that and, and are with him throughout the entire time. You know, there's a lot of ups and downs and uh, a, a, lot, a lot of crazy things happen in, in season two. And uh, I'm, I'm excited for people to see it 
and uh, and, and to check it out because uh, I think that you know everyone's gonna dig it. Mr. Carter, did you? Where did you grab the information from for the character that you play? Is there something that somebody you knew, something you saw? Where did you? I mean, I I I, 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 I have a lot of friends who are from Houston, so for me it was a lot of like you know, just hanging out with those friends, talking with them about their experiences growing up in Houston. And yeah. also like, you know, looking at the script. I mean, for me as an actor, I'm always one who goes to the text, goes to the source, you know, in terms of what the writer has put down, what Greg has put down and, and the team of writers, you know. So for me, it's about like taking what what's given and then obviously adding my own life to it while also adding bits and pieces from people that I know who are from Houston and, and you know, and who have, who've had certain experiences. So it's sort of a collage of, of things. But for me as an actor, you know, as I consider myself a serious actor or whatever, you know, I, I always try to draw from a lot of different places and a lot of different things, you know? Was there a little bit of fear? Is there any fear when you go into a role like this? Because there's a certain, like somebody could watch you on screen and know if you're really from Houston, by the way you talk, the way you move. Did you feel any pressure to really emulate the style and sound of the city, so to speak? I think for me, not necessarily. For me, it was just about making sure that I'm staying true to, to, to yeah, to the character, but as well as the tone of season one. You know what I mean? And like making sure that I'm coming in with a certain energy that's sort of carrying through what has already been laid down. You know, so there there wasn't a fear, but it was definitely for me just wanting to make sure that it was a cohesive like energy and a cohesive vibe. You know, making sure that that what what is set down in the tone continue throughout you know what I mean so but I wasn't necessarily afraid about not sounding from from Houston or anything like that I think you know I I, I give it up to the work you know I do the work and then I, I release it then I let it go you know that's that's sort of how that's my process you know I, I do it then you forget about it and then you know and then people will receive it as they will but uh as, for me as long as you're staying true to the story true to the character you know and true to what's going on then then Honestly, sometimes half the battle's already done. Half the work is already done there, you know? I feel you. Will you be releasing music for real? I mean, you're an artist. I, you know, I've, I've kind of let those, I've let that, that uh, dream sort of not go fully, but like uh, my, my interest and, and, you know, aspirations have sort of shifted. That, that was something that I was more into, you know, years back. But now I think I'm more focusing on acting and, uh, and, and trying to, take roles that are challenging and pushing me forward in certain ways. So, it, it, I, I mean, I'm never saying never though. I mean, I'm not giving up, giving it up completely because it is still something I love to do, but now it's more of a hobby per se, not, not as much a career um, aspiration and goal. Well, it was fun watching you, man. And when I had a chance to see you up close and personal, it was fun to watch you make the other actor comfortable. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We had yeah, I, man. I respect yeah. that because every act is not like that. So I respect you know, it. Like I, I like the way that you were trying to make this person comfortable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doing. That was cool. I just want to salute you for that. So well, well, for me, it's it's all it's always about again like a cohesive energy. I mean, like like with any project, especially you was into it though. You were so you was, you was definitely into it. You you were trying. Yeah, to you know, I think with with any project, especially something that has like such a big cast, like. It's always more fun when everyone's comfortable with each other and everyone's having a good time. Like you want to, you want to show up to set and have fun making something. And and really, furthermore, this is Greg's, you know, brainchild. But but it's also a collaborative effort. I mean, it's everyone bringing their talents, everyone bringing their energy, their ideas, and and you know, to to one common place and saying what can we make together. So like, I always look at it more from like a collaborative standpoint. So I, I'm I'm gonna make everyone comfortable if I can. You know, especially if it's my scene partner or someone that I'm, you know, in a romantic situation with on, on screen, you know? So it's all, all about chemistry and stuff like that. Well, I salute you. <laughs> and then Mr. Jolly Vet, should I call you Rev right now or what? Yeah. <laughs> I'm innocent, bro. You <laughs> call me a whole lot of things, but you gotta be, I gotta be mindful. It depends on what I'm gonna answer to. <laughs> What's up, man? <laughs> how you doing, bro? So how did Greg convince you to be a part of this? I know maybe it, it wasn't easy for like, Greg, I'm not doing that for you. So leave me alone. I got other things going on. I don't know whose story that is. <laughs> but you know, as, as, a, as an actor, it doesn't take much convincing when you believe in the project. Does that make any sense? Yes. He didn't give me the whole meal. He told me what my responsibility was. Mm. And the word teaches us this, too much is given, much is required. Doesn't matter how many shows I've been a part of, doesn't matter how many films I've done, doesn't matter, none of that matters. What matters is 
here is a man with a vision who God sent to you to help him with his vision. Are you going to do what God told you to do? So it wasn't a whole lot of convincing that he had to do. It was something that you chose him as the pastor. Good choice, Mr. Carter. I just wanted to see if he was going to preach to me. It was a test. <laughs> it was a deed. It was a test. I see he lived in that character, too. I, I was like, get ready to hit him with an amen right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, well, you know, Hat, and you know, and you know my philosophy. You know, you we're brothers. So I am who I am no matter where I am. Absolutely. But being a be, being being an associate minister, being an ordained minister, being who I am, I'm still a human being. Yes, sir. You know, and I think we forget that. And that is what I love so much about season two. We stepped out of Reverend Benny mm. and allowed him to be Benny. Does that make any sense? Yes, sir. I, I wasn't, I, I mean, I'm gonna always be Reverend Parker in, mm -hmm. in, in, in Fifth War, but you got to see Benny in season two. And, and that's what I appreciated because I, I, think, I think we have an issue of always wanting the minister to be perfect, always mm -hmm. wanting the minister to be flawless. The devil is a lie. You know, <laughs> we have issues too. How, how can I give you what God wants me to give you if God don't give it to me first? Mm. Okay. How can I tell you what you can come through if I didn't go through it myself or have firsthand knowledge of what it is? So, man, this, it, it, it wasn't a whole lot of convincing. It allowed me to be stretched. It allowed me to be, uh, 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 to be candid and to show the world what my range is. Yes, sir. If that makes any sense. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Episode number one has already been released. Yes. Uh, Episode two, I think people can see now. How are they going to drop these releases? Because I don't think you can, you know, we've gotten used to, and this is just the truth. We're used to getting a whole season all at <laughs> once. That's just the world we live in now. But I don't think that's the case with what you're doing with Fifth Ward on UMC. Right, right, right. So this is season two. So uh, season one is already up six episodes. So you can go to UMC and watch the six. Uh, episode one. Uh, was dropped yesterday on Thursday, and then new episodes are dropped every Thursday. Okay. Uh, okay. And they dropped actually at uh, twelve oh one midnight. So basically, at stay up with late Wednesday, and you can watch the new episode. <laughs> uh, and they're gonna keep rolling them out. The idea of it is, is that they are uh, they're giving they're making people digest it and watch. And the one thing I do like about it, though, because I've had this conversation with other people. That the episodes really are rewatchable. You go back in, and you're like, "Well, yeah, I missed," and then you realize you caught something that you might have missed the first time. And so, I think even if even on the uh, second or third watching, it's it's still satisfying. But that's one thing about it. You know, when they when they do, I know some networks uh, will drop all the episodes at one time, and people just binge watch it and gobble it up like candy, right? <laughs> and and and. and, and you don't get an idea of the reflection of how much time it takes to actually shoot it, you know, and put it together the way you want it to be. And so, uh, in a way, I kind of like it. So, it yeah, I was going to ask you that. Do you have a preference? Would you like all this whole full season to drop at once or the anticipation of knowing that you got to wait, like, it's getting real good and then the episode ends? You're like, what? <laughs> I got to wait until next Thursday to see them, you know. I, 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 as a as a producer, a movie maker, a creator, do you have a preference? Well, I think the new streaming uh, changed the way that filmmakers have to make stories. Uh, there was a moment in time where I think that it made sense to have elements of different story arcs be stretched out over a season. Uh, I think a lot of people would say if you watch Fifth Ward, an episode of the Fifth Ward, more happens in one episode than happens in three episodes in some shows. And so I think that's what you have to do uh, as a filmmaker, but also as a businessman, you have to think about uh, having something that is quote unquote binge worthy. So it means that you have to work a little bit harder to make sure you keep people's interest so they want to come back. And, uh, and that means that you have to have a talented group of people like Carter Redwood, Junie Hong, Derek Dixon, Sheldon Jolivet, those kind of people behind you in, in, in front of the camera to develop, to have these really uh, terrific performances to make people want to come back. I know you were speaking earlier with Carter being 
the the music part of the show, so to speak. But I know D Rec actually has roots as a music mogul in the city. I don't know if is is there a soundtrack that will go along with this season? I know music is a huge part, and, and it's always been a huge part of every movies that you've done. There's always <laughs> some soundtracks. So I don't know if there's a season two soundtrack. I don't know if D Rec, the music mogul. <laughs> will have something to do with that. I'm, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just curious. That's, I'm just asking because I know him. Okay, so, so, so aside like, from you know, you said he was a gangster. I don't know that to be the truth. <laughs> I know him to be a nice guy, but well, I do know he's a music guy. Movie, so I'm just curious. <laughs> Well, well, I can tell you this, there's a soundtrack being released from Conscious Minds Entertainment, they're online, but we do have a couple, I think we have a song or two from D-Rec. Well, let me just say this, uh, I did a Christmas movie uh, for BET last year called One Crazy Christmas, really big show, and I t went to D-Rec and I said, Godfather, Godfather, D-Rec, <laughs> can I take one of your songs and put it at the front of the movie? And he was like, well... I don't know, <laughs> and, and, did, and so at the beginning of it though, he did let, let, he did uh, cut me a sweet deal for one of the songs. <laughs> he got a sweet deal, but he cut me a sweet. <laughs> he still he still gonna get he still buy his money, but uh, <laughs> but uh, but no, we do have a soundtrack for it. But uh, but of course, uh, D Rick has uh, uh, his own thing that's happening with his music. So please jump in wherever that is. Go ahead, Mr. Ray. He, he done gave you the great uh, opportunity and walk up on that one. It yeah. don't get better than that. Yeah. Yeah. Some people may not know that you still do music in the city, right? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They know that uh, you no. had a huge catalog back in the day, but they may not know that you still do music acting. Yeah, no. Um, Greg, no, like, I pretty much try to support him on whatever. I'm not actually doing, producing the music. Um, I think uh, Charlie Mack, I think, Greg, unless I'm yeah, yeah, wrong, no, kind of been cool. heading that up, but but I but I've done everything I can to to support them if they need something, they know they got it. They're like it's it's whatever. I'm kind of chilling like you too, Mr. Mad Hatter Mogul, your damn self. So you know what I mean. So you got a pretty damn good catalog over there too. So hit him up too, Greg. Shit. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I'm over here just trying to do too, a friendly Greg. neighborhood podcast with Miss Junie Get Carter Jolly Beck and yourself. That's all I'm doing. That's all I'm doing. That's all I'm doing. But wait, 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 wait. So let me just say this about Mr. Mad Hatter, because he will oh, never God, say let's this. Let's not do this. He'll never say this himself. Now. Some 20 years ago, yes, I'm dating how old his brother is. <laughs> Some 20 years ago, a plucky young DJ actually had a part. Oh, in God. Ward. <laughs> so I don't know what his name is. Oh. I don't know. He mad had it. Yes, there he is. So years this. ago, uh, Mad Hatter became part of the family. And so I was the Fifth Ward family. So I was very excited and glad. Uh, Carter, you have a scene with Hatter, right? Well, you can tell a little bit about it. Don't get too much. <laughs> this is ridiculous. No, Carter's great. I, I've seen him. That's what I was talking about when I seen him in action. And I love the way that he was really trying to make sure that the person that he was acting with, making sure she was comfortable. And he was totally zoned in to that. You know, we were in there, but while he was doing this thing, he was totally zoned out. So I really appreciate that that about him. Greg, I just want to thank you again. You gave a, a kid that cannot act, that should not be trying to act, the opportunity to act as one of the worst acting scenes I've ever seen, but you was cool enough. <laughs> I know all everybody was sitting there like, do we have to put in there, Greg? Like, he's a DJ in the city. I like him. I'm going to let it ride. It was, it's terrible, but I appreciate that, man. I just want to say that, man. I really do appreciate it. It's, it was, it was very, very, very nice. And thank you. You've always made me a part of all the stuff that you was doing. So I want to salute you for that and I appreciate that. But really quick, because I know everybody got to run. Why is it still to this day important to you? Because you could have wrote, a, you could have wrote about anything. But why was it important for you to do Fifth Ward? Why was it important for you? And I noticed, yeah, you got Maya and you got um, so many other incredible people on this show. But you've always honed in on people out of age town to give them opportunity and that's not just in front of the camera it's behind the camera too why do you continue to do that and why is that so important honestly i needed to make some about fifth ward while there was still a fifth ward left i, mm -hmm. I mean gentrifying of the neighborhood is happening wow. so i need to do that so and that was really what it was wow that and, and 
and, and, and for me, I just needed to make sure, if you look at a lot of the neighborhoods throughout uh, North America, uh, you have these incursions where you have these big sports arenas. Uh, Carter, you, Carter's from, well, I guess, I know he's originally from New York, but, uh, but you know, they built this big sports arena in Brooklyn, the basketball arena. What's, what is it called? Not Barclays, is it? Uh, and it changed the whole neighborhood. And now you see the same thing happening in Los Angeles where they're building a new football stadium in South Central LA. And of course, this is happening in Seattle. So neighborhoods and places that, that were traditionally ours, and, and I'm not being facetious about that, but you know what I mean. Yeah. They're, they're quickly being gentrified and turned over. And I really wanted to make sure that we documented what made and what makes Fifth Ward special and unique uh, while it was still there. Um, uh, if you look at some neighborhoods in, uh, in Houston, uh, particularly like uh, Third, Third Ward, uh, you know, there's been a lot of discussion uh, and I'll go into a little bit. People who are watching this who are not from Houston, if you've ever heard of the place called the Turkey Leg Hut, Turkey Leg Hut has had a lot of problems because people who are new moving into the neighborhood don't know how we do things. You know what we do? We put the speakers on the sidewalk and pump up the music real loud. And you know, it's a, it's a party. That, that wasn't just when Turkey Leg Hut was there, when the uh, uh, Reggae Hut and all, that's what we did, that's how we do. But people who are moving into the neighborhood don't see and understand that culture and how we do things. And so I think it's really important for us to make sure that we, we, we document and, and bottle up what makes what we have unique. And it's not always something that we have to think about in terms of, uh, uh, of like, you know, uh, the way the neighborhood looks, but the culture, there's a culture to Third Ward, to Absolutely. Fifth Ward, Absolutely. to South Park, to Sunnyside, these different areas. And we wanna, we wanna preserve that uh, so that, you know, our, we, have, we have that as a, as a spiritual me mentality, a spiritual memory for our, for our peoples. Well, yeah. I think it's an incredible way to document the city by you making it a part of this and that you get to do it on a huge platform, so. Again, yeah. I salute you again. Uh, Ms. Junie, uh, Carter, d Rec, Jolivet, I appreciate all you guys. Uh, season number two, uh, obviously we're going for season number three. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, Absolutely. and Greg, uh, will that, and I noticed, cause I know you kind of like, you're, you, you control it all. I, I'm directing, <laughs> I'm writing it. I'm <laughs> acting it if I got to, I'll play the male part, the female part, I'll do it all. <laughs> will, there, will there be, Will there be any other opportunities for people to write episodes uh, for you? Because I know a lot of time, you know, this is your vision. This is the way you want to do it. But I'm just curious if ever other people will be allowed to come in and, you know, start expanding that story as well. Yeah, uh, I, H Town is where I live. Is in my heart. Um, I just got uh, greenlit uh, to do a new TV series for the Vire Network, V-Y-R-E. Okay. And it's called a, it's called a hip hop story. Okay. And, uh, and, and uh, I'm in the process of, I just started writing those scripts and the idea is that I want to, if God willing, we might shoot that either at the end of the year or the top of the year. And uh, so that's news flash. So Appreciate people who didn't know, I'm letting people know uh, that's happening. So I'm going to be, of course, digging in my back pocket, finding all my great actors, my great writers, my great artisans who work on set, and so that they can be involved in the next project. I, I'm not happy until everybody I call, I say, hey, Junie, I wanna hire you. Oh, I'm booked on this. Uh, Jolly Bell, I wanna hire you. Oh, I'm booked on this. And where they're booked is their shot, because they're in Houston, uh, you know? And so I, I wanna continue to work with people like Carter, d -Rick, Jolivet, Junie, Jaylene, Mac, all, everybody as much as I can because I, I think we have the talent and the diversity in Houston to rival other cities like Atlanta, uh, even LA, uh, as far as what we have here. 
uh, we have so many great musical artists. People know about Beyonce and Lizzo and, and all these other people, but, but people don't realize people like D-Rick built the music industry. If there was not a D-Rick, I don't know if people would have actually had a chance to hear the screwed up click to know he direct to the screwed up click out of H town nationwide, him and a couple other labels back in the day that couldn't have happened without direct. I wouldn't be the filmmaker I am because he gave me a chance to direct one of his films back in the day, dirty thirds. Well, well home sweet home. So it's, so it's like, uh, you know, it's, it's like, I don't, I don't think people realize the talent that we have here, but in, I want to make sure that everything I do is to get that talent into the world, let people know and see. Junie, where can people follow you and what's, what's uh, next on the horizon for you? Uh, you know, I am in a way kind of, I guess like the rest of the world, just chilling out from the pandemic, not mm -hmm. doing much. Mm -hmm. um, I'm still, I live, out in California, um, but I've been spending a lot more time in Houston because of the pandemic. So like the last four months I've been here in Houston and it's actually a really nice kind of refreshing break because when you're out in LA, it's always a hustle and it's just, um, it feels really good to be back home and just to, you know, be with family and friends. Can people follow you? Are you on the gram? I don't know. I know everybody. Yeah, I, I'm on media. Instagram. And I actually, I was going to ask everybody else uh, what their Instagram handle name is. But I'm at Junie Huang. And that's for all my social media. So um, check out my social media. Follow me. I'll follow you back. I always follow back. And um, yeah, I worked on a couple of stuff. I did a, um, a voiceover for a Michael Madsen film that he did, a Bollywood movie. And I did a film actually right here in Houston called acid test so look out for that i play a mom in that one too um and yeah i'm just trying to keep as busy as possible during this time where everything is just kind of shut down and locked down gotcha. carter where can they follow you at uh they can check me out on instagram at carter redwood so it's just my name straight through on instagram at carter redwood uh same thing on twitter and then uh facebook is carter redwood official so Carter Redwood is 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 the the handle on most uh, social media platforms, with the exception of Facebook, which is Carter Redwood official. Well, there's a whole lot of ways you can follow me. The first place is uh, S Jolivet on the gram, S Jolivet on Facebook, uh, S Jolivet on Twitter. But man, any any the Fountain of Praise, if you're in Houston, uh, quite a few other churches as well. While you're in Houston, but I'm but I'm I'm an associate over at the Fountain of Praise. Yes, sir. But man, do what you do. <laughs> <laughs> D-Ray, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know you. I know you too, G, to be hanging up on Instagram or social media. But I know you got to have one because you get forced into it. So let them know what it is. Um, on Instagram, it's at Rick Real R E C K R E A L, and on Facebook, it's uh Derek D. Rick Dixon. And uh, you're right, I'm not on there that much. <laughs> 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 and then Greg yeah, Carter right. finally <laughs> put your social and everything out there. People want to follow you because they're interested in all the stuff that you got going on. At Greg Carter Nexus, N-E-X-U-S. And then also on my Facebook, you can find me at Filmmaker Greg Carter as well. I'm always looking for new talent. So if you're looking for an uh, opportunity, look me up. So if you want to watch the show Fifth War, you can go to umc.tv. Uh, and the show is actually 5TH Ward. And you can also uh, get that on Xfinity. If you go to Xfinity and you go to like um, uh, on-demand channels, you can find it there. And then finally, if you have, it's also a channel on Amazon Prime and uh, Roku. Greg, thank you so much. Thank everybody. Good luck to y'all for the second season. And I'll be looking for a small role of eating in a diner or something on season three. <laughs> <laughs> And you know what? We might see Mr. Mad Hatter somewhere in season two. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Oh, God. Greg, say goodbye and have a great day, man. Good luck on everything, brother. Thank you, fam. Appreciate you.